Well, what's up guys, Tui here. In this video, I'm going to share my thoughts on the recent movie, Sacred Cow. Before we get into that, be sure to subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos about health and fitness, mindset, plant-based living, and body life in paradise. Now let's get straight into it. Sacred Cow movie, to my understanding, is advocating for better meat to regenerative farming. What I found good about this movie is that it is bringing up some of the problems in our current system, um, the, um, the way animals are treated in the factory farms and in the slaughterhouse industry, and also how this industry is affecting our planet. However, there was quite a few uh, questionable kind of statements without much of backup, which we're going to go into later on. But um, definitely there's a lot of um, good thoughts behind this uh, method that they're advocating for and kind of going away from this factory setup and going more into farming in alignment with nature, also respecting the animals uh, in a much better way. What I also talk about is um, health aspects of um, eating meat and uh, not eating meat, like plant-based versus uh, meat eater diets and uh, yeah there was quite a few statements that were not really backed up in general what this movie was missing a lot was data like numbers there was just uh, a lot of kind of like statements tr like from just like farmers and uh, without any kind of like calculations or numbers to pack th back things up but also I didn't like about the movie it was uh, clearly set up to kind of like really label um, veganism and people who choose to eat a plant-based diet like the at the very beginning they introduced this lady a former vegan who is um, who fractured her spine because she was vegan and these kind of things or the setup was like clearly put into um, into like the direction that veganism means that you are gonna get health problems like there was just like the statements and word that were used there was like eventually you are going to get problems and these kind of like things that are just not true and there was no backup on uh, any of that stuff uh, just oftentimes there was like studies show or backed up by science but like there was no reference to like which studies where was the studies made uh, so it is easy to find studies on anything, especially if they are funded by the meat industry or the dairy industry in general. So just like saying that studies show or there is no backup on this or there's backup on that um, doesn't really tell much. And um, what they also said in the movie was that um, people are confused because there is this and that said and um, people are confused because of this plant-based movement and because of uh, that is now being a lot on the topic that meat is bad for your health and bad for the planet and the ethical reasons but what I see that actually this movie ironically is doing itself it's just confusing people even more so as I said there was very little data there were no numbers there is like no backup on most of the statements that were said uh, it was a lot about like sustainable farming and about how meat is necessary and and all that but there was like no calculations about how um, how that would how we would, would feed the planet even if we would switch like all our factory farms into um, regenerative farming what they suggest there was there's like no backup if we would actually have the resources for that and how would that work like the um, practice that they introduce now is probably like a, just a couple of max a couple of percentages from all the farming done at this point so what would have been interesting is would be see like actually calculations like how are we going to feed the whole human population like um, if we would go back into uh, family farms like how about all the the big cities like how about people in New York and in Bangkok and and like in, in places where it might not be that easy and how would that affect like um, our resources like there was a statement that the own like at the end they were talking about like if, it, if it's possible to um, feed the human population that way and it was just stated like yeah it's possible and it's the only way without any other backup like no calculation like how how are we going to use the water and how and they even said like the problem is not resources the problem is the usage of resources which I really much agree because um, Raising meat 
is way more it takes way more land and it takes way more water than um, like raising plant foods so what I was what I found was uh, like really largely missing was like data as calculations like how are we going to build that idyllic system that they are uh, proposing there because of course it would be better to go back into those kind of farming practices where the animals are treated better where the um, uh, nature is is treated better and like the, the idea i think what they are trying to bring up with this movie is is good from the core it's really good but like yeah i was just really much missing like is that is that actually going to be possible for our almost 8 billion people or is it just like for the elite people who can afford it and how about uh, how much meat would it be possible to produce that way uh, like if we think of the amount of uh, animal products consumed today like yeah so that was really largely missing in my opinion and what I found really upsetting was how vegans w were made these like extreme activists who are just, um, yeah, there was like, just like I said that they just introduced this former vegan who was like clearly not like the healthiest and, and because she, even, she was vegan, she fractured her spine and got these health problems and, and there was like no uh, talk about any, any other cases and like, I was actually like amused by how they started like how this lady started to compare like that she why she went apparently back to eating meat was that she realized that if she eats lettuce she might be killing snails <laughs> And the purpose in this clearly is to try to label veganism as like an uh, extremist, like an activism extremist movement, which would lead to people kind of feeling embarrassed. I think that they want to to get it like it's embarrassing to uh, to be vegan because then you're labeled as this kind of extremist who cannot consider alternative options. And they stated at some point that we are kind of on the same cause but we just try to do it a different way which is not true because even if that is true that um they that they as well want to at least according to the movie want to um build this system also for the welfare of animals better treatment of animals but the idea behind veganism is to not abuse uh, not abuse animals, not cause any unnecessary suffering and killing is obviously one of the worst forms of it so taking a life from a living being who doesn't want to die like it just cannot be done humanely, it cannot be done in an ethical way it, it can be done better, it can be done with less pain for example but if it's unnecessary, like there is uh, in, in veganism that's the very core so stating that we have kind of the same end goal is uh, very inaccurate and how they addressed this killing part was actually like, like it went really far. Like, well, if you're eating plant-based, you're still killing insects, and your lettuce has caused killing rabbits and bumbies and this kind of stuff. Like, it's kind of like stating like, well, if you cannot save every single animal, like just fuck it. Like, why not just then start eating all the possible meat and and killing all the cows and pigs and and, and that. So I think that was just that went like a little bit too far like if that's actually uh, the, the only way they can bring it up is by stating that well you're killing insects anyway you might be killing killing causing by eating lettuce and plants you might be um, contributing to killing some rabbits like first of all obviously when when people eat meat those animals or are fed with plants that's one of the reasons why raising animals takes so much more resources takes more land because first there has to be the land where they where we grow the food for the animals so even if you would stay if you if you would stay like well you i'm eating animals so i'm saving plants that's not true that's actually you are eating even more plants than a plant-based person and then on top of that you're eating the animals so um, kind of like in veganism the idea is to do the least amount of harm not to be perfect like if you cannot kill any any fly or any insect then you cannot leave your house because it just naturally happens when you are even just moving so yeah that was a little bit lame also how the uh, slaughterhouse aspect was um, was introduced like there was 
some good points from the farmers or like some insights like I, I'm I'm sure there is a lot of farmers like family farmers who actually care about their animals who actually treat the animals well until the point that they then kill them but like that they care that their animals have a good life and that they even care of that like process of slaughtering which was also funny some of the people could not even use the word slaughter they were using the word processing the animal like literally going as far as possible from kind of having that connection that we're dealing with animals that we are not dealing with objects anyway um the the way that that was, was processed or that that was introduced was that there is this slaughterhouse that has apparently built to make the process as pain-free and as smooth as possible like if I remember right, it was in the UK, a party when it's going to open and everything looks like so clean and, and people clapping hands, like the, the reality guys, like look up footage from Slaughterhouse. That's the biggest reason why people go vegan. So I believe it is really hard to make killing someone who doesn't want to die a humane, pleasurable, uh, morally correct ethical despite the ethics which um, the movie was talking about a large emphasis was on kind of comparing the regenerative agriculture with the kind of monostructural one which we have today largely but what I found disturbing was like it was kind of set up in the way that it looked like it's uh, the, the way that we are doing things now like the way that we are uh, growing plants to feed the human population it was set in a way that it kind of seemed like this is the this is the problem because of veganism or this is the problem that occurs if people eat plants and again most of those fields most of that food that we are growing that way actually goes to feed the animals and what is ironic what was ironic as well was that there was this discussion about how it's so wrong that people are pushing this agenda of um, the world going plant-based because there is countries that people cannot buy B12 supplement and they just don't have the possibility to get like their nutrients other than by eating meat and at the same time in those countries in the poor countries people die from hunger because the crops that are fed uh, the, the crops that are grown there are fed to the animals which are then sold as flesh to the rich Western people. So uh, just really ironic that that wasn't addressed at all. Um, and if I speak for myself, for example, is I'm not pushing my, uh, I'm not trying to inspire people to go vegan in poor countries where that might not be an option, or I'm not saying that some uh, fisherman in a fisher village should go vegan. I literally like the, the vegan movement is for people who have the choice like it's 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 kind of like well if you um why would i why would i buy an electronic car why would i buy why would i use a more sustainable way of uh, driving car like reducing my fossil fuels because a person in africa cannot do it so why why would i why would i do it it's just unfair kind of like that weird setup in that like um yeah just doesn't make sense and it's it is true like if you um, if you eat a poorly consistent plant-based diet, like any diet, you will, uh, it will lead into problems if you're not getting enough nutrients. But the thing is that it is really easy and possible to consist a plant, purely plant-based diet properly. If we just educate the world how to do it, or in, like if we talk about the, the Western people who have the choice now, if, if we get educated on it, uh, it is it is really easy to do and like going back to that B12 like most of the B12 produced in the world is fed to farm animals and People get their B12 like through the middleman which being the animal so saying that um, vegan, like vegans need to take B12 so it's unnatural and people cannot afford it. It's just like again a little bit like well it, it, Like the supplement is giving to the animal and you eat the animal as we could just take the supplement without feeding it to the animal first and what I what I liked about like the movie with the um, kind of explanation of how it is important to take care of our soil and how our soil is suffering, how it's causing a lot of problems. That's that's uh, that's very true and that's an accurate problem that we need to start solving. But like 
the way that they introduce there is not the only option. It is also possible um, to just farm plants in a sustainable way where we take good care of the soil. There is a documentary about it. I recently watched uh, The Need to Grow. So if you're interested in that, you can check that out. So kind of state that the movie kind of put it in a light stating that if we just if we if we go vegan, the planet is going to die because we're destroying the soil. But the truth is that the the problem is that we are now getting is because of the big human population, the, the growing human population. Our food system has gone into this factory form, um, both in plants and in uh, animal agriculture. But there is solution in uh, in also just by the plant base, which will take less resources through consuming less land and less water. So yeah, it's just that wasn't addressed at all. Then they talk about like land that could not anyway be uh, used to process food. Um, so yeah, that might be true. There might be areas that uh, there would be no possibility to grow plants. But the, the other fact is that we are constantly destroying rainforests just to make space, just to make land to raise cattle. So uh, I don't know the exact numbers, I'm gonna, not going to go there, but like I said at the start, I think there was very much too little uh, like numbers and data and information. There was just these statements and most of the people kind of introduced in the film were like farmers anyway, like there was very little like scientists or doctors or anything like that. So it doesn't really, I don't know, it's just a little bit weird if, if all the information is coming from people who are in the business and which is like their interest to kind of um, clean up the picture of eating meat. But yeah, to sum it up, um, we definitely agree that the current system is not working and that we need to quickly start making changes and that uh, we need to start taking care of our planet and the soil, uh, our health and the welfare of animals. Um, one option can be uh, definitely going more into that family farming system, that regenerative farming. However, my, my questions to uh, people behind this movie is like, is it calculated, is it going to be possible to feed our current human population and growing human population that way? How, is, how will it be done and how are our resources going to last in, in that way? And how affordable will that be? Like if we <clears throat> compared, there was like this talk about like vegan products like Impossible Burgers and this like everything's so processed and expensive and that but like um, one of the reasons probably that we have gone into this horrible factory farming is because it's more cost efficient so would people actually be able to afford uh, kind of this luxury grass-fed meat so yeah, until I see more numbers I found that a lot of a lot of stuff that was represented in the movie was really woke um, so I would like to see much more um, actually like science behind this, studies behind this and see who has funded these studies um, and yeah like like actual accurate calculations. The only calculation they had in the movie was like some guy was just like folding this paper into like uh, 10 times and then he was like explaining like this part of the paper is this and then he took a business. It was make so confusing that like people halfway through already like lost the point like like he was talking about this how we use the land or something like that. So that if that's the only is that that's the best that they can go with. Um, I think there's a reason that there was not like more accurate uh, numbers behind that. And this movie is clearly kind of um, a response also to all the uh, many documentaries about um, the the plant-based movement and the reasons why it is beneficial to go plant-based, both for our health, our planet and the welfare of animals. So clearly this was kind of like trying to cover a lot of um, those reasons and put the meat in like a better light. Uh, however, in my opinion, it is just, if it's unnecessary to kill beings who don't want to die, if we have other options, we have evolved into a society that we can find better ways Lastly, I want to remind that the the idyllic picture that they were painting in this movie about the welfare of animals and how in the movie they were cuddling the animals and everything was green and, 
um, everything was beautiful and ethical and humane slaughter and animals are happy and happy meat that's not the reality if they are like if they want to go towards that through the farming practice that's awesome but currently um, the vast majority of all animal products come from horrible factory farms where the animals are in pain they're suffering their whole life and then they go through this horrible slaughter process so remember that uh, if you are consuming animal products, that's most likely what you are supporting unless you know exactly where your animal products are coming from. If you have visited the farm and you like, it's really hard to ensure, let's say that way, it's really hard to ensure that your, your meat is actually um, coming from a good place, so to say. So in that sense, it's just easier to go plant-based if you don't want to support uh, animal abuse. Like it's much harder to ensure when you go to a restaurant or to the supermarket that your meat is actually produced uh, like well. So yeah, to conclude, I would be very happy to see more of this happier meat, let's say. I don't think the animals still will be happy that they are killed, but um, if they have had, had a happier life, like much rather support that. But I still am looking for the answers, how sustainable is that gonna be? How are we gonna feed the world through that? Um, and um, yeah, I think it's just a little bit of a desperate attempt towards all the documentaries and movies that are, have come out in the past years to um, tell all the kind of positive side about plant-based diet, how it's, uh, how it's uh, like positively affecting our health and could save the problem that we are facing with our resources and our climate change and obviously also save the animals for all the suffer that we let them go through so yeah let me know if you have watched the movie what was your thoughts on it this was kind of like a lot of things that just came up in my opinion so uh yeah healthy discussion is welcome uh, even that they say in the movie that meatless monday is just so bad it's just so dangerous because someone someone might think that like like how can you go like once a week without meat like just horrible there was uh this lady who stated that it's just wrong that they do it in schools like it's just so bad to go vegetarian like horrible you might might like just lose your health <laughs> uh just kidding but yeah anyway um that's my opinion guys uh let me know if you watch the film and i will see you in the next video